Let's discuss elbow anatomy, and we'll start out with the bony or osseous structures of the elbow. Now, when we think of the elbow, it actually consists of three bones. The distal part of the humerus, the radius, and the ulna. If we look at the bones of the forearm, the radius and ulna, it's quite interesting to note that the bones are triangular shaped, and therefore they have three surfaces and three edges, which allow the various muscles and soft tissues to attach in order to perform the various movements. If we start out with the proximal end of the radius, we can see that we have a head of the bone, and this is also covered in cartilage. Now, at the distal part of the radius, you can see that the bone actually bifurcates so that the cross section of the bone here becomes more quadrangular. And the distal edge of the bone also articulates with the wrist. If we look at the bifurcation here, it's concave. And it also articulates with the ulna. And there's a space between the two known as the ulnar notch of the radius. There's also another protuberance on the distal radius, which is the styloid process of the radius. Now, if we come back up and we look at the proximal part of the ulna, we can see that it is quite large and it has two processes on it. The coronoid process and on the back side, which we'll look at later, the olecranon. The distal part of the ulna has an ulnar head and laterally it has a styloid process, the styloid process of the ulna. Attached to the styloid process is a very strong ligament that comes down and actually attaches into the bones of the wrist connecting the ulna to the wrist. Now, what we'll do is we'll recap all the main bony landmarks, starting with the uh, proximal end of the bones. So, looking at the radius, we have the radial head, the radial neck, and the radial tuberosity. Going over to the ulna, we have the coronoid process, we have the radial notch, on the back we'll have the olecranon process, and the space in here is known as the trochlear notch. Now, going to the distal part of the bones, looking at the radius, we have the styloid process of the radius, the articular surface of the radius, as well as the ulnar notch, and going over to the ulna, we have the ulnar head, and a little further distally, we have the styloid process of the ulna. Now we're going to take a look at the posterior region of the elbow, We'll spot our bony landmarks here. We have the olecranon process, medial epicondyle of the humerus, lateral epicondyle of the humerus. We can see the olecranon fossa here. The olecranon articulates with the trochlea of the humerus, and the radius articulates with the capitulum of the humerus. And we're going to demonstrate the movement here of the elbow, and you can see how that olecranon just slides right into the groove, into the olecranon fossa much like a hinge. So now we're going to go over the muscles involved in flexion of the elbow. We're going to start with the first muscle, the brachialis. So the first muscle we're going to discuss here is the brachialis. It arises from the anterior surface of the distal humerus and inserts on the ulna on the coronoid process. Basically this muscle is involved as a flexor of the elbow. This is the major action. Good. So the next muscle we're going to go over is the brachioradialis. This muscle originates on the lateral ridge of the distal humerus. And if we follow it all the way down, we'll see that it inserts in a, via a long tendon at the base of the radial styloid process. Now, this is kind of an interesting muscle in that its actions, in terms of the elbow, is that it's involved in both pronation or supination. Basically, this muscle brings the forearm into a medial position. Now, if we look at several muscles here, the brachioradialis, then we consider the brachialis, right in the middle here we have the cubital fossa. So this actually forms the border, the lateral border of the cubital, cubital fossa, which is an area that we will be discussing. So the next muscle we're going to discuss is the biceps brachii. It's actually a really interesting muscle. It has two origins. Now, we have the long head, which arises from the tubercle above the glenoid cavity of the scapula, back up in here. 
It travels through the shoulder joint between the greater and lesser tubercles and along the bicepital groove before merging with the body of the muscle. This area over here, this would be the short head. Now, the short head starts as a tendon at the coracoid process on the lateral edge of the scapula and becomes a fleshy body which joins with the muscle fibers as it works its way down here of the long head about halfway in, down the humerus. Now, the two heads, as they, farther, as they get farther down the arm here, the two heads then combine downward and form one tendon, which passes anterior to the elbow joint and inserts at the bicepital tuberosity of the radius. Now, if we look at the action of this muscle, this muscle is the primary elbow flexor, so so and it also supinates the radius at the elbow. So as it comes up, we can supinate and actually turn. Yes, exactly. Good. Now, contraction of this muscle is very visible on the anterior part of the arm when the elbow is flexed and the forearm is supinated. So just bring it to the side there a little bit, just sort of, yeah, exactly. Excellent. Now we'll discuss the muscles that are used in extension of the elbow, starting with the triceps. The triceps brachii, as the name suggests, consists of three heads. The first head, the long head, originates from the tubercle just below the glenoid cavity of the scapula, while the lateral head actually originates from the lateral posterior shaft of the humerus. And the medial head, which we can't see here, you can think of as a deep head. It lies deep to these muscles and it comes off the posterior inferior humerus where it is covered up by the bulk of the muscle here. Now, the triceps has a single long flat tendon that inserts into the olecranon. And the action created by these muscles is primarily, they're, they're basically the major elbow extensors. So we'll have Mickey demonstrate here. Great. Yeah. So that is extension of the elbow. The long head also participates in extension of the arm because of its attachment up into the scapula. We've highlighted the anconius, a relatively small muscle, in this red-orange color. Now, the action of this muscle is it is also an extensor of the elbow, and it plays a small role in abduction during pronation of the ulna. The muscle runs from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus to the superior ulna. Let's discuss the pronators of the forearm, starting first with the pronator teres. The pronator teres arises from the medial epicondyle of the humerus as well as the coronoid process of the ulna and it inserts on the mid-lateral surface of the radius. Now, it is the major pronator of the forearm, but it also assists in flexion of the elbow. The second muscle, the pronator quadratus, is a square-shaped muscle. It runs between the anterior surfaces of the distal ulna and the distal radius. Now, when this muscle contracts, it pulls the radius across the ulna into pronation. So we'll have Mickey demonstrate. So this is the action of pronation. Now, an interesting point about the uh, pronator muscles is that they attach onto three bones, humerus, radius, as well as the ulna. So let's talk about a, a few significant things about the pronators. With the pronator tears here, it's very easy to find that palpation. All we're gonna do is basically take it back and forth between pronation and supination. Do you feel that there, Mickey? Yes. Yes. So again, this is basically the medial border of the cubital fossa. So we have the brachioradialis, the pronator tears, and the brachialis, and right in the center here we have the cubital fossa. Now, if I'm going here, you can actually feel the border. And what's also important about this muscle is it's actually a, there's two bellies to this muscle. And commonly, we'll actually get the median nerve entrapped between these two bellies. If we go halfway down here, right to the center, and we kind of go back and forth like that. There you go. And we're going to find the median nerve. And then we just sort of take it down. And you can actually feel where it translates through the structure. 
So this is pretty cool, actually. There we go. You feel that? Yes. Yes. Very <laughs> cool. <laughs> now, when it comes to pronation of the uh, pronator quadratus here, uh, basically, as Evangelos was alluding to, it helps to bring it over into pronation, taking the radius towards the ulna. Now, if we go on this area here, and we just take it over, bring it over into the side there, take it over again, you can actually just lightly palpate it, and you can actually feel it translating over there. Okay, so that's quite easy. And I can also go into opposition with it right there. So if I actually take it across like this, you can feel it. Now, why this is important, too, is sometimes we'll get restrictions underneath this muscle with the ulnar nerve, and that will actually cause some entrapment. So we can actually take this over here like so, and you can actually feel the point of entrapment along there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And if you're kind of wondering whether you're on the nerve or not, you just kind of take these two fingers and kind of bring them down here like this a little bit. Yeah. You feel that translating? Yeah. Literally, I'm on the ulnar nerve. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. You can actually feel where you get entrapment with the median nerve through the pronator tears and the ulnar nerve right at the point here on the inside of there. So just bring it in right there. Nailed it. I think he's so happy with me right now. <laughs>